Hello, my name is Jessica Eddy, and my research focuses on the correlation of median arcuate ligament syndrome, postural orthostatic intolerance, and the presentation of clinical depression. So median arcuate ligament syndrome is a rare congenital condition where the diaphragm sits too low and the median arcuate ligament crushes the celiac artery, solar plexus, and celiac ganglion nerve bundle. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and clinical depression often present as co-occurring conditions. So the presentation of these conditions impacts the solar plexus, the celiac ganglion, the autonomic nervous system, and neuropathy. So this research was conducted in order to see if patients with median arcuate ligament syndrome and orthostatic intolerance as a comorbidity present with higher levels of clinical depression. And furthermore, it seeks to see if the severity of those chronic conditions increases, if the severity of depression would increase as well. Um, so it also, it, um, it also looks into the connection between median arcuate ligament syndrome, orthostatic intolerance, and clinical depression caused by dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system, which works in conjugation with the solar plexus, sympathetic nervous system, dopamine and serotonin pathways, and dopamine receptor agonists and antagonists. So Moll's anatomy occurs when the median arcuate ligament pulls too tightly at T12 and L1 through 2, and it crushes the celiac artery, which is positioned too high on the aorta. And this anatomical abnormality occurs in 15% of the population, but of that 15%, only 1% will develop these detrimental and sometimes life-threatening symptoms. So because of this, it's crucial to realize the connection between MALS and clinical depression without misdiagnosing MALS as clinical depression. So MALS also affects the solar plexus and celiac ganglion, which are known as the brain of the gut. Um, and the celiac ganglia aorta, corinal ganglia, splenic, and vagal nerves are also directly impacted, um, leading to the hypothesis that because the nervous system is so impacted, it is worthwhile to consider how MALS relates to POTS as POTS directly affects the autonomic nervous system and how living with these chronic conditions may contribute to higher levels of clinical depression. So the hypothesis for this current study are as follows. Um, that MALS patients will also be diagnosed with POTS and clinical depression and are more likely to receive that POTS or clinical depression diagnosis prior to the MALS diagnosis because these patients are often misdiagnosed time and time again. Secondly, that there is a correlation between MALS and clinical depression, POTS and clinical depression, and both conditions in clinical depression. Um, and last, that MALS and POTS will increase in severity over time as their chronic conditions, and the severity of clinical depression will increase as well. So the measures used for this are the, were the Beck Depression Inventory, which is a psychometric test that determines the presence of clinical depression. Um, it's a 21-item self-rated scale that evaluates the key symptoms of depression. The tilt table testing was also used, um, and this test monitors normal resting heart rhythm to determine the prevalence and severity of POTS. Um, and the diagnostic measures for POTS um, are an increase in the heart rate of at least 30 beats per minute upon standing, accompanied by symptoms of POTS. Um, and this is kind of a diagnosis of exclusion. And you can see an example tilt table test result um, in the presentation. Finally, um, I also use superior mesenteric artery duplex ultrasounds, which are used to determine the presence and severity of MALS by looking at the peak systolic velocity within the proximal part of the celiac trunk, um, and peak systolic velocity during respiration with a marked increase during inspiration in PSV greater than 200 CMS and greater than a 3 to 1 ratio of PSV in the celiac artery in expiration compared with the PSV in the abdominal aorta and the aorta immediately below the diaphragm um, indicates the presence of moles. And it should be noted that it's very important to check the PSV upon inspiration and expiration because upon expiration, the mall ligament tightens around the diaphragm, um, which actually causes a higher peak systolic velocity. So you must take the PSV and look at the highest one upon expiration. Um, so as far as tests, um, I ran a one sample chi-square analysis um, with results um, R equals 0.895 um, for um, 85 out of the 93 MALS patients, um, and then 91 out of the 93 MALS patients met the clinical depression criteria, um, and R equaled 0.897, both passing the critical value. Um, I also ran the Pearson correlation tests between um, depression and MALS, depression and POTS, and depression and MALS and POTS, and all of those turned out statistically significant findings. Um, and then furthermore, 
I ran repeated measure ANOVA because these patients were, they submitted their tilt table test results and their SMA duplex ultrasounds at the beginning of the study, again at six months and again at nine months um, in order to look at repeated measures. And every time they submitted these measures, they also took the Beck depression inventory again. Um, it should be noted though that 50 um, MALS patients from the beginning did not repeat in the repeated measures because they went for surgical intervention of median arcuate ligament syndrome, which is the only known successful treatment, um, and therefore they were no longer part of the study. Um, so out of the 93 MALS patients, 85 were diagnosed with POTS, and 91 met the clinical depression criteria, and participants reported that they received a POTS or clinical depression diagnosis prior to receiving a MALS diagnosis. Um, and this is a common occurrence as MALS is often misdiagnosed as POTS or clinical depression due to its rarity. Um, and you can see the correlation between um, depression and POTS and depression and MALS in the linear regression charts above. And over time, as MALS, uh, over time, MALS and POTS did progress and worsen. Um, and that was shown through all the data. And clinical depression increased as well. So there was statistically significant correlation between MALS and depression and POTS and depression. And then during the repeated measures, there was a noticeable difference in the participants' peak systolic velocity and heart rate points. Both were increased again at the six month time, and then they increased even higher at the nine month time, showing how these conditions really do get worse over time. And likewise, the depression scores also increased. So the control group had no increase in depression scores when tested again at six and nine months, and actually only two of those in, of the 36 control group individuals even met the criteria for clinical depression. So, though the correlation between these diseases is not coincidental, it is crucial to remember that though these three diseases present in similar ways, each requires different intervention. Thus, early and accurate diagnosis is crucial for positive long-term patient outcomes. Um, and future studies should investigate neurogenic MALS, also known as NMALS, which is a more difficult to which is a more difficult to diagnose version of MALS um, because it typically requires celiac plexus block intervention. And furthermore, there's a lot more work to be done regarding the connection of the celiac plexus, autonomic nervous system, and neurotransmitters. Uh, and some of the limitations of this study include it being conducted during a global pandemic, so not having that one-on-one -on -one communication with each of the participants, um, and also not including pediatric presentation of MALS. So thank you so much for watching. Um, the demographic highlights are listed on the chart, as well as some example SMA duplex ultrasounds and tilt table testing. Um, and feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you.